Here I'm going to look at a few examples of reflections now. Um, on this one, on all my examples, I'm going to use these same three points, and I'm going to reflect them over different things. So to start, I'm going to flip over the y-axis. Now, maybe you remember the little formula that I showed you. Maybe you don't. What I always do is, because I forget it all the time, I just I go like this, and I make this picture, and I say, well, I'm going to flip it over the y-axis. So if I flip that over the y-axis, I take my first point, and I go, well, it's supposed to be at 4, 5, which would be about here. Now, if I flipped it over the y-axis, it's going to end up about right here. I can see that because I got to, because I remember that this has to be perpendicular. That segment connecting the pre-image to the image has to be perpendicular to my line of reflection, and my points have to be equidistant from uh, the line of, reflection, line of reflection. So now I look at that and go, well, if I do that, it appears that my, my height of my point is the same. That was 5. But my x value is now different, so I end up right there. And once I do that, <coughs> I don't need to do it for all the other ones, because now I remember that, oh, yeah, that's right. When I flip over the y-axis, the y value always stays the same, and it's the x value that changes. So that's going to stay at the negative 3, and my x value is going to become positive 2. My x value changes. It's going to become the positive 1, and the y value stays as is. And I'm done. I get over here to flip over the x-axis, well, I would do the same thing. There's my coordinate grid. I have to flip over the x-axis, put in my point 4, 5. So go 4 to the right, 5 up. Now if I flip it over, it's going to end up somewhere here, approximately. And I look at that and say, well, now this time, the x value is staying as is, but it's my y value that's going to change. And then just repeat the process. X stays the same. Y is the one that changes the sign. X value stays as is. It's the Y value that changes the sign. I flip it over the line Y equals X. This one's a little bit, maybe you could think of it as a little more difficult, because now you have to try to draw in this line Y equals X. It's going to look something like that. And if I put in, and I'm going to try four fives, Sometimes it's a little di difficult just because the points are so close. So I'm going to go to negative 1, 8. Coordinates are a little different. So negative 1, 8 is going to end up about right there. And if I flip it, it appears that it would end up maybe somewhere over in this area. And then I go, oh, yeah, that's right. On this one, the x and the y value just trade places. So what used to be y now becomes x. And what used to be y, or what used to be x, is now the y. And then I can do that problem just flip-flop the x and y values. And we have that one done. Flip it over y equals negative x. Repeat my process if I forgot the little formula. Now I remember y equals negative x is a line that looks something like that. And I'm going to go back to the negative 1, 8 because I thought that was helpful. So if I go negative 1, 8, it's going to be somewhere there. Now, if I flip this over, it's going to be somewhere like that. And that's where I go. And I know my picture is not drawn to scale very well, so it's a little harder to see it. But I look at it and realize that I knew there was something with I had to just flip-flop the x and y value around. But it had to have been more than that, because if I flip-flop them around, it would be 8, negative 1. Well, that this point here is clearly not 8, negative 1. But how about negative 8? positive 1. That would make more sense. So when we flipped over y equals negative x, remember we changed the location. I can't think of it that way. Of your x and y. Flip-flop your x and y. And also change the sign. This one will become 3, positive 2. And here will be at negative 5, negative 4. And then the last one here, flipping about a point, And specifically in this case, flipping about the origin. If I reflect about the origin, start with my point of <coughs> negative 1, 8, which would be about here. And I remember that I had to head towards the line or the point of reflection, keep going. Had to be about the same distance away, which would put me about here. And then I look at this and figure out that, well, that must put me at 1, negative 8. So I look at my how this works, and I said, oh, yeah, that's right. All I do is change the signs on each one, keep the numbers in the same spot. So this will become 2, 3, and then 
negative 4, negative 5. So even for someone like me, you think that, oh, Mr. Rudy, the math teacher, you know everything. Well, I forget these little rules a lot of times, so I just always refer back to my picture to help me remember them. Um, they're in the back of my head somewhere, it's just trying to find them, and the picture helps me bring out those, those rules or those little formulas. So use the picture, it can be very helpful for you. And like always, ask questions if you have them.